Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, the ATF, still on a rampage, is about to implement its new rule on stabilizing braces as it relates to AR pistols and or short-barreled rifles. Now, that has us asking several questions. We've already done a video on what does this really mean to you and kind of introduced you to the intricacies of ATF Form 4999. But today we're going to talk about a little something different because today we got to talk about how the ATF will enforce their new pistol brace rule. Okay, the rule we're dealing with here is 2021R-08. What does that mean to you? That number doesn't mean anything. But I will put the links for it down below so you can read the proposed rulemaking, the summaries, everything you need to do. Under this action by the ATF, what we are doing, once again, is we are changing the rules midstream. We're going to change the definitions again, because now we're going to include stabilizing braces in the definition of a rifle. Now, a rifle is a firearm which expels a fixed cartridge through a rifle bore that has a barrel of at least 16 inches in length or an overall length of at least 26 inches, which is intended to be fired from the shoulder. The addition of a stabilizing brace, which helps assist in shouldering the firearm, means that suddenly a lot of AR pistols could be classified as short-barreled rifles. Of course, the issue with a short-barrel rifle is, is if you are in possession of one and you have not properly registered it through the Gun Control Act and the National Firearms Act, that means you have not registered it with the ATF, you have not filled out your Form 1 if you're manufacturing it, your Form 4 if you purchase it as is, you did not pay your $200 tax stamp. If you are currently in possession of a short barrel rifle under those circumstances, you, my friend, are a felon. Now, how do we tell the difference between an AR pistol and a short barrel rifle? Well, despite the fact that we all seem to have been able to do it for years, the ATF has a new form called Form 4999. I will put the link for that down below too. This is our four point scale to determine does the configuration of this particular firearm suggest that the firearm is meant to be fired one handed like an AR pistol or shouldered with two hands like a rifle with a short barrel, thus making it a short barrel rifle. The question for us today is how on God's green earth is the ATF going to enforce this. Now we've done videos about how the ATF has been going on a rampage and we've even done a video recently talking about how the ATF was going to hire many, many new agents, 300 of them to be exact, 140 field agents, 160 of which were going to regulate the FFLs. We've also talked about all the stuff going on with unfinished frames and receivers, new definitions of frames and receivers. And when we take careful look at all of that legislation, all of the ATF's proposed rules, all of what they are requiring, what I believe is going to happen when it comes to enforcing the AR pistol brace rule is they're going to put the onus on the FFLs. You see, right now the ATF does not have the manpower to go door to door, knocking on everyone's doors, wanting to see, hey, can I take a look at your AR pistol real quick? I got to run it through this checklist and see if it's a pistol or an SBR. By the way, if it's an SBR, I'm probably going to confiscate it right here and hold it ransom for $200 worth of tax stamps. Uh, you can understand the dangers associated with trying to do that. You could understand the amount of resources that would have to be spent in doing that. And you could also understand many lawful and responsible gun owners' unwillingness or reluctance to participate in such an activity. So the bottom line is, is that they really only can control one industry and that's the FFL industry. So how do I think that this pistol brace rule is going to be enforced? I think it's going to be enforced exactly how they're enforcing the unfinished frame and receivers in the form one kits. That is this. They're going to go to the FFLs first. If you got an unfinished frame or receiver, you're either going to serialize it or we're going to take it into custody. We're going to confiscate it. I think the same is going to go for AR pistols. They're going to come in. They're going to take a look at inventory. They're going to score everything. Anything that's got four points or more, hey, that's an SBR. You can either forfeit it, surrender it, or pay us the $200 tax stamp. Take it out of inventory, however, until such time that we okay the sale of it. I think the same, though, is going to go for if you have a firearm that goes to an FFL for repair. Now, here's the thing. 
If you're taking a firearm into an FFL for just the day, you drop it off at nine in the morning, you pick it up at two in the afternoon, they put the new trigger in, bada boom, bada bing, you're done, that's fine. I don't think that's an issue. But the issue, the rub, just like with unfinished frames and receivers is, is if an FFL has to keep a firearm overnight or multiple days to do repair work on it, they have to, by law, check it into inventory. And when they check it into inventory, it is my belief that the ATF will place the onus on the FFLs to score this and possibly even may place upon them an affirmative reporting obligation so that if they have an AR pistol that comes in that clearly is under ATF's new definition, SBR, they may be under a duty to notify the ATF or local law enforcement of that. The bottom line is we don't really know how this is going to be enforced yet. I'm going to be keeping very close track on it, and you will be the first to know. But if we take a look at how all of this other legislation, new regulations, new definitions, new restrictions, how, all, how is all of this being enforced? It's being forced upon us by forcing it through the FFL industry. And that is how I think that the stabilizing brace is also going to be enforced. Listen, you may have more questions about this issue, anything else the ATF is doing, or anything related to your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com. Or, of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.